would like to welcome everyone to the Master of Construction Management webinar. Uh, my name is Matt Acklin. I am the Domestic Enrollment Manager here at New School, and I'm joined here by George Welch. And I'm the Chair of the uh, Construction Management Programs here at New School, both the undergraduate, which is on ground here, as well as the master's program we're going to talk about today, which is online. Great, and before we get started, I did want to just point out something, a feature on the webinar here. There is a Q&A button at the bottom of your screen, and as we go through this presentation, if you'd like to ask any questions, go ahead and use that feature. We're not going to be able to answer those questions as the presentation is occurring, but we will reserve some time towards the end to look at your questions and address them one by one. So with that being said, I'm going to pass the mic over to Mr. George Welch. And we're going to begin our uh, travel through here. So um, you, we've introduced ourselves. You can see our pictures, and I think you can see our video as well. So Matt, let's go to the next slide. So Marvin Malika is the uh, president of uh, New School, and he is uh, quite an amazing gentleman. But he has a statement that says, as architects and designers, we have a very special way of seeing the world. What we do is valuable to the rest of the world. And one of the reasons why it's important to understand some of the school philosophy is we are a school of architecture and design. It's strange and unusual and sometimes that you have a construction management program that's embedded in such a school, but we focus on the issue of implementing architecture. Let's go to the next slide. So our mission here is to nurture and inspire design-minded students. When we talk about design-minded, we talk about the understanding that there are multiple ways to do problem solving. And one of the design-minded tools is matrix problem solving. It's not a linear solution, such as a scientific method or a business method, but it is, in fact, a very complex method by which you can look at extremely complex things. Uh, we offer degrees in architecture and construction management but we also offer degrees in design and digital marketing. So our philosophy here is rooted in that design thinking that we talked about. We focus on preparation for practice for our architectural students and project-based learning for all of our programs. So let's hit that next slide. Our curriculum is built on four educational pillars, and these are the things that become the foundation of how we structure the interplay between our programs. Preparation for practice. Most of our faculty are practicing members of the architecture and construction management fields. We look at the international reach, which we have through our cross-border capabilities here in San Diego, plus our international reach through the programs and schools that we have across the world. Sustainability is a top method of study for us. We are looking at ways in which we can build in a more sustainable fashion, we can operate buildings in a more sustainable fashion, and we can build with sustainable techniques that will provide us with a much better use of our natural resources. Urban engagement is a key element because many of the buildings we talk about building are built in the urban environment. And the building process isn't the only thing. It's how does it affect the community? So we are, actively engaged in that. We're an award-winning school. We have uh, both faculty and students who have been uh, honored with several awards. Uh, we'll talk about a few of them, such as the ASC student competition a little bit later in the presentation. But we're also accredited. We have the WASC accreditation, which is the Western Association of Schools and, and Colleges. And that's a regional accreditation that is um, looking at almost all of the schools in the Western United States. We also have programmatic uh, accreditation for the architecture programs here from the National Architectural Accrediting Board. So teaching you is one thing, but being dedicated to you taking your education and moving into your career is another thing. Overall at the school, we have a 91% job placement rate within the first six months of graduation. That's overall as a school. In our bachelors of CM program, we have 100% placement. In fact, 
the school has got a reputation that's strong enough that the companies are coming in and recruiting our second, third, and fourth year students at the beginning of each quarter because they are looking to bring them into the industry. We're located in a wonderful place uh, in San Diego. We have probably a thousand pictures of our beautiful city that we could show you. Uh, if you're an online student, it won't make much difference. But if you're an online student who lives in the region, we also want to make sure that you're aware that you can be a participant in our student organizations that are here on campus. We have a very strong uh, construction management student association that's actively engaged with the Construction Management Association of America. In fact, we've been received the award as the student chapter of the year in 2014. And um, through that involvement, we build those network bridges to all of the industry uh, firms that are hiring and engaged with the construction management business. So new school here in, um, in San Diego and our, our focus, when we started our construction management program, we started the bachelor's program, but almost immediately we realized that we needed to go to that next step. We needed to go to that step where, well, actually, if I was going to write the program again, I would call it the Masters of Management in Construction. Because when we teach the bachelor's program, we teach students all of the tasks that the construction manager must do. In our master's program, we teach you how to manage those people who are doing those tasks. Because the construction management leadership is truly leading the teams of people who are doing the different tasks in our industry. So let's talk a little bit about what I look for in the program. This last Saturday, we were at Balboa Park and had a beautiful graduation service where we graduated both uh, bachelors and masters in construction management. But when I look at the students who graduated, I look also at our mission statement and say, what have we done? The goal of our program is to nurture ethical design sensitive construction managers who will lead positive change in the built environment industry. That to me is a really well thought out, well focused goal that when I look at each of those students who walked across the stage, I have to say, did we accomplish that? And I think we have. The tests that we do are what we call our program learning outcomes. And it's these seven items that you see on the screen to see what are the characteristics of that ethical design sensitive construction manager that we are looking at. So through our, I'm not gonna read each one of these to you, we can go through those later, and we will send you the slides later on so you can look at them yourself. But these are the measuring sticks by which we evaluate our progress in meeting our mission statement. So let's talk a little bit about the industry. What is a construction manager? Some of you might know because you're already involved in the construction industry. What I tell my beginning students is, you'll probably spend much of your life explaining to people what a construction manager is, because not that many people really know what it is. So let's look at a little clip here, because, tag it, there we go. So there's architects and designers who prepare the drawings, and we see them doing that work. There's tradespeople who actually physically build the facilities. But the construction manager is this person in the middle who works between those designers and those field people to build a team that's capable of implementing the architect's design. So what are those employment opportunities that we have? Let's look a little bit of the industry information. The American um, General, the Association of General Contractors annually publishes a survey about the status of our industry. These screenshots I'm gonna show you now are from the 2015 industry survey, and they were issued in April of 2016. One of the key issues is, what are the workforce challenges for the firms? 86% of the firms said they have a problem finding enough technical, and professional 
staff to meet their requirements right now. And 52% of those are the salary professional positions we talk about. If we're having a problem filling those key salary positions, indicate which ones are the, having the most trouble. And if you look on the map down below, the top four are project managers and superintendents, estimating professionals, quality control personnel, and engineers. So if you're going through the program that we teach here, you are going to be qualified to do all but those engineering issues. We also asked this question of how would you rate the low overall quality of the local pipeline for training new construction craft people? Because, oh, by the way, if we have all professional staff and no trained craft, we will not get buildings built. So the schools here in, in San Diego, and I'm sure in other areas, are realizing that they're not feeding people into the trade schools that are necessary to grow this pipeline. So the AGC, the Association of Builders and Constructors, and many of the professional organizations are all working with our high schools now to fill that, backfill that uh, trade pipeline. Let's look at the next one. This is another key uh, component. Are people who are working for your firm being stolen by other firms within your industry or within your locale? And you can see that trade people, the craft personnel, 35% of the firm said that their people are being stolen by other local firms. We're seeing 24% in the professional staff. So that means that there is an undersupply of the people that we need to go forward and and build this next generation of buildings. So we're not gonna click into this right now, but this is a link for you to look at. The one, the ONET online is a um, compilation of information that comes from the Bureau of Labor Statistics and builds information about each different um, job description. The one that this links to is for construction managers. And we can, if we have time at the end, we might get into that during the, the Q&A. Let's go to the next slide. So here's another issue that's really true. In 2012, at the CMAA National Convention in Chicago, one of the presenters talked about the fact that over the next 10 years, 40% of the leadership of our industry was going to go away. And that's because at that time, 17% of us were over 60 and 23% were over 55. And the significance of that is these were the people who had equity ownership in the firms. And when we had the economic downturn, they stayed on. And it's the generation behind them that left the industry. That's where the gap is now. And that's why this Masters of Online program is really an important tool to help fill that gap. Let's go to the next one. So another question is, so how big is the industry? Are there a dozen jobs? Are there thousands of jobs? What's going on? So let's look at a little bit about the industry. Our industry is one that builds communities that serve people, whether it's residential, commercial, industrial, heavy civil, environmental, all of those businesses are part of what makes up our industry. It touches the lives of everybody. It's evolved from a craft where the master builder might be the guy who not only designed, but shaped the stones, put the stones together. It also has a very significant impact on the global economy. Worldwide, it is more than $3.9 trillion. That happens to be more than the United States government spends in its annual budget. Our economy here in the United States is about $17.5 trillion. And globally, there's over $72 trillion in the global uh, domestic product. So when you look at this, this industry employs over 7 million people and gives rise to several additional industries that provide information to us. For the next one. It's actually larger than the automobile and steel industries on a global basis together. Housing starts is one of the key things that we look at that talks about what is the strength of the economy. And this next chart shows you a little bit about 
if you've been around a few years, you can see light gray bars on the screen. And those are times when we've had recessions. So you can see how things went up and things went down. The worst we've had was this one that took place from the peak of 2008 to the depths of 2009. And we have yet to recover back to that normal level where we would be building houses. This is a significant chart because it talks about not only how many houses do we need to build, but how many houses do we need to build as the population grows. So this is the number of starts we do divided by the million, millions of US citizens. So at right now we are looking at about 3,800 uh, housing starts per year per million student citizens. We are going to go from 310 million citizens back in 2010 to about 450 million citizens in the year 2060. So we're going to see throughout that time, housing is going to need to grow, housing grows, shopping needs to grow, shopping needs to grow, industrial and warehousing needs to grow, educational needs to grow, highways need to grow. All of that is driven by the need to serve the population. So our industry has over 88,000 companies. That's a lot of choices. It also has about 1.6 million individuals who own small businesses. And annually in the United States, we put 1 trillion of that construction that we talked about 3.9 globally, one quarter of it is in the United States, which, oh, by the way, means that the other three quarters is not. So there's opportunity across the globe. So, what does the construction manager do? If you remember earlier on, I said we teach a lot of the CM skills at the Bachelor of Science program, and you'll need to know what those skills are in order to manage those people who do those skills. So estimating, administering the project, managing the construction job site, planning and scheduling, project safety, a huge uh, part of our industry, quality control, Assessing project risks are all key elements of what the CM does. So is this program viable for international students? You may not see that at the bottom. So we developed the online program to look at the systems that the industry is using today. So our curriculum is based on this interdisciplinary action of architecture, business, management, and leadership. So our MCM program is delivered via Blackboard. If you haven't been on Blackboard, we can give you some good links to be able to go online and look at a sample of what it's like. But it is an asynchronous method, which is something that's very important. It means that you do not have to be in the classroom at the same time as the instructor, which allows us to go across borders, across time zones, and across the globe, both in our teaching and our working. Okay, let's take a look at uh, this next one here. Nope, back up one. One more, there we go. So for where we're working, you could be a CM working in San Diego, working with an architect that's based in New York, who's hired a modeler who's based in Vietnam, with an engineer for the project who's based in Mumbai, India, all working on a project that's in mainland China. And the probability of you all sitting down at the table once a week is nil. You are going to have to work in an asynchronous environment. And so that asynchronous environment really deals with coming in and reading your emails in the morning and spending your day researching and, and refining the information that people need, putting together presentations and making those presentations available to people at the time that they can see them across the globe. So our program is, is delivered in eight modules and we designed it so that someone who is working can take two modules a year, or two modules a quarter, and complete the entire program in 12 months. I don't have the statistics on it, but I'm going to say that a significant portion of our uh, students have graduated in that 12-month period. 
this word cloud really talks about looking at each of those uh, modules. Let's go back to the module thing. Sorry, sorry. Okay. You can see these are the different categories that we deal with. You'll typically take an O course and a five course at the same time. So it would be like current practices in construction management and advanced project delivery systems would be what you would do in your first quarter. Or possibly in your first quarter, you might do building information modeling and commercial design and construction methods. So those are the pairs that we do. It's also possible to do them one course at a time. But let's look at that word cloud again. As you look at this, you'll see that the big words are evaluate, analyze, leadership, risk awareness, all of these things which are the key elements of the management side of the construction management. And this is what we focus on in this, uh, in this course of study. So what's the focus? Well, interestingly, when I uh, interviewed someone for the, to become the chair of the program back in you know, 2010, I said, so where do you think our program is going to be in five years? And he thought for a minute and he says, my God, I have no idea. He says, but I know five years ago I didn't have an iPhone and it's changed the way everything is done. And that's really true. So we don't teach a lot of software. We teach the methodologies, the knowledge, the process, the tools of analysis that you need to solve problems with tools that aren't even invented yet. Because during the next 20 years or 40 years of your career, we're going to see things that are available for you to use that we have never experienced before. So let's get back to some award winning. Um, there's a consistent face in here. Oh, that's me, I guess. <laughs> but the Associated Schools of Construction Student Competition is the uh, biggest job fair in steroids on steroids in the Western Hemisphere. Um, last year, we had 85 major companies who came to this, sponsored the student competitions, and had a job fair and a recruiting time that was amazing. Through our participation, we participated now the last four years in the Reno competition. And as a small school, we've kind of surprised people because we've taken first place in virtual design and construction, then first place in design build, and back that up with a second year in a row where we won the design build competition. Because of our participation in this, the industry knows who New School is. So industry collaboration is a real key for us. This is a business where people hire people they know. Getting engaged in, well, at our school, because of our involvement, we've had, I think this last year, we had nine firms come in individually, set up times, have student uh, presentations, and then interview and hire students, both for internships and full-time jobs after they got out. So I'm going to kind of turn this over to Matt now because he's going to talk about the application process and a few other things. All right. Thank you very much, George. And we will have some time, like I said at the beginning, to go over some of your questions. I'd like to just take this moment, minute to go over the application process and then also uh, give you my contact information in case you have any follow-up questions. Really, the first thing that you need to do if you are interested in applying to the Master of Construction Management program is go on to our website to the online application. There's a link provided here. Uh, it's very easy to get to. If you go to the home page, it's just on the right-hand side of the screen. It says apply now. Start there, and then you're going to go through the process. From there, you're going to have an enrollment specialist assigned to work with you. Uh, the steps will be laid out for you at the end of that online application, but you're basically going to be working with an enrollment specialist on com completing each of these steps one by one. So you do want to pay the application fee, which is a $75 fee. We're going to need verification of your undergraduate transcript and that transcript alone. Um, we don't need every college that you've ever attended. We just need that bachelor degree transcript. 
Generally, we're looking for students to have at least a 2.7 grade point average. If your grade point average isn't at a 2.7, that doesn't mean you can't apply, but there are additional steps involved, so you're going to want to talk to your enrollment specialist about that. There is a statement of purpose, and that's just like an, a college entrance essay. We also ask for a resume. It's not required that you come from a construction background. Right. Uh, I think that's an important piece no, to note. I, I think that's really important because one of the things that when we wrote this master's program, I like to write for somebody. And so I chose one of my former employees who was, uh, um, he had his bachelor's degree in humanities from Notre Dame. Mm -hmm. He was on the project because he loved being outside, but he was limited as to where he could go. So I kind of thought about Kevin while I was writing these different modules and working with the team to build this. And, and it's, it's really that way. So the program is designed, so if you come in with a bachelor's degree in finance or administration or humanities, that you can be brought up to speed because we're going to teach you how these pieces work and then teach you the way to manage them. Absolutely. And then the last piece, because I, I do know that we have some international students who are joining us on this, a webinar. If you are an international student applying as an international student, there is a requirement for an English language exam. The two most popular exams are generally the TOEFL or the IELTS exam, and the minimum scores are listed on this page here. Uh, one last point that I did want to make, and that is that we are currently accepting applications for July 11th as well as October 10th. So those are our next two start dates. You can actually start this program any quarter. You can start in the summer, you can start in the fall, you can start in the winter, you can start in the spring. So for those of you who are very eager to get started right away, we can actually still work with you and get your application done for July for this, for this right. summer. And there's a great advantage to that in that if you start in July, you'll be able to walk next June in the graduation Absolutely. ceremony. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and that would be the best opportunity if you want to participate in next year's graduation to start in the summer. Last slide that we're going to go over before we answer some questions, and that's the tuition and fees. This is the entire program cost. So that would be a per quarter fee, which, um, you know, just divide that number by four, and you'll come out with the uh, per quarter fee, which you're responsible for each quarter. You could also, as George mentioned a little earlier, take this program part-time, so the tuition could get adjusted in that way if you were to start with six credits instead of 12 credits. This is um, the tuition that, that is uh, for the program, but there's also financial aid. We're, we're just like any other uh, Title IV funded um, program, and we have loans, we have um, different institutional grants that we offer. There are some links provided here where you can investigate that. Just to go over a few of those options, uh, we have an international scholarship. We have a new school scholarship that's a merit and need-based scholarship. Um, we also, what am I forgetting? Um, we, we have an industry discount. That's a big one, I almost forgot. Yeah. So yes, we, we do have an industry discount if you, if you are involved in the construction management industry, you're our, those students are eligible for a discount on the overall tuition. Let me mention one other thing that's there because this is, uh, I've mentioned our industry and our professional societies that are around here. They are very generous in offering scholarships that are not administered through the school. But we graduated uh, a young man this last week who uh, was a five-year Bachelor of Architecture student who took a minor in construction management. I think he made money while going to school because he knew how to apply for these scholarships. Mm -hmm. And the Society of American Military Engineers, the CMAA, the ACE Mentor Program, all of these groups give scholarships to students who, who have need and have uh, merit. Absolutely. And um, it's the most money per hour you will ever make is if you fill out scholarship applications for and sure. get those scholarships. So. When you, uh, when you consider this, consider that there is industry, the industry realizes we need to fill this shortfall in the pipeline. And because of that, they're very supportive of helping people get through school. Agreed. 
So the last slide here, I just wanted to give you a picture of my smiling face here and also provide my phone number and email address. I'm the uh, domestic enrollment manager. For those of you who are international, feel free to contact me and I'll get you in touch with the right people. Just um, th the last thing I'll leave you with is if you are interested, I encourage you to apply to get started as soon as, as possible. Um, and by filling out an online application, you'll have somebody from the enrollment department to help you out with every step of the process from the time you apply to the time you enroll and even beyond. So with that, I think Excellent. we're- well, Let's see if we have any questions. Let's see if we have any questions for sure. How are we doing on time? Okay, I think we have to pull it up over here if you don't mind with okay. the Q and A. Q and A here. Okay, Joseph, I see you're on the line. So, um, are there opportunities for students to participate in the competitions? We have um, uh, in the. We need to type, or we can. No, you can. Let's uh, answer. We can talk. Okay, so uh, so I have to push the answer live. No, no, no. I'm gonna we'll just, we'll just go through technology. We don't teach technology here. <laughs> remember. <laughs> so. Uh, so Joseph, we can have students who are graduates, but there's special graduate um, uh, problems that are offered at the um, at the the Reno competition, and so that would mean we would need to have an entire team of graduate students. So, but because it can be a blend of architecture and construction management students, that's quite possible. Okay. So plus, we've also had graduate students in the past who have been coaches for the undergraduate teams and have helped out and worked side by side and participated at the event there. Yeah, Joseph and I have actually been in touch and I, I know that um, we might have some other new school students who are online here. We, we do get, we tend to get a lot of uh, alumni of our undergraduate programs right. who continue on to do this program. So um, he's asking in his next question uh, whether or not um, whether or not certain experience applies to the industry discount, and we are very flexible with that and, and open to new opportunities to partner with other with new um, industry. So, you know, as far as which discount would be larger, and in most cases, the alumni discount is actually the larger discount. Right. So, and uh, Joe Su. Uh, has uh, mentioned in here that he's uh, been in the industry for a while and now wants to make this uh, progress. And uh, well, let me just make a, I just finished my master's degree last month. So um, <laughs> I think it's quite possible to do this uh, while you're working and I think you'll uh, um, certainly be able to do that. The question that you're really focused on here is, will employers be willing to hire people in their 40s? That's the group of people who are gone from the industry. So they're looking for people who have both business maturity and age who are going to move in that succession planning into the leadership of their firms. So I think that there's quite a strong possibility for you both in opportunity as well as in um, choice. I'll take Ronnie. So Ronnie, yeah, I, I don't know when you were able to join us on the webinar, but we do have uh, federal financial aid available for this program as well as um, institutional grants. Um, there's some outside scholarships that George suggested that we might even be able to uh, link you up with and, and provide those as well. If you have questions that you'd like to ask our financial aid department specifically, feel free to contact me and I'll get you in touch with the right department. All right, Charisma has a question. Are there any hands-on project assigned with this online learning? Almost every course has a team project where you will be working on projects with your uh, classmates. You'll be assigned through whatever method the instructor chooses, whether he does it randomly or whether he allows you to choose up teams. But it's interesting, it, uh, I mentioned the graduation on Saturday, to see students who work together for a year but never met each other come together at graduation and, and the friendship is already knotted together. They're, they're networked like you wouldn't believe. So the opportunity to do 
remember, we're not going to, we don't drive nails in our construction management program. We drive analysis, we drive recommendations, we drive schedule, we drive budget. And all of those pieces are the pieces that you'll work with in these team-based projects. Okay. We scroll down. Do we have any more? I can't believe that we've answered every question. <laughs> any other questions out there? We have a little oh. time left. Oh, Joseph has come back. The capstone project. Sure. I think the capstone project is really um, an interesting one because the capstone project kind of goes back to that slide we showed you about the program learning outcomes. How are you going to show that you've met those program learning outcomes? And the way we do it is through a team-based project where you are using scheduling and budgeting and estimating and uh, safety and quality control and leadership, all putting together what we would call a project execution plan, which is the target for every uh, company to have one of those when they start a project. How, how are we going to, you know, it might be our strategic idea that we want to build that building, but we need a tactical plan that's in place that says, here's how we're going to do it. You're going to put that type of project together uh, with that. I think if we get a chance to, uh, to chat uh, on or offline, uh, Joseph, we can talk to some of the students who have been through both our architecture school and then taken the uh, the MCM program while they were working and uh, see how important that element of the capstone has been for them. Prisma's asking about the workload and ah. working full time and managing homework and assignments. I have the answer to this on my thumb drive, which is <laughs> stuck in my computer at home 20 miles away from here because I, <laughs> I did a, you know, one of the things we do each quarter is we survey our students to find out, do we need to adjust our teaching methodologies? So I ran a report this morning that was over the last nine quarters that we've taught these courses. And I pulled the question of how many hours do you spend a week on these courses? So each, well, the average was 15.58 hours per course so you're talking about if you look at the carnegie rule it for an hour credit you should be spending three hours of time so a six credit course would be around 18 hours so that encompasses your reading your writing your research your in some cases trip to a job site in your neighborhood interviewing a superintendent actively taking some photographs or videos of an activity that's going on on the site. So I think you will find that uh, there's lots of opportunity to do that, but you will spend, you know, we have a, a, a video clip from Paul Montgomery, who was one of our very first graduates. And I said, so what was it like? Cause I was really concerned. Did we underestimate or did we overestimate? He said, I spent about 36 hours a week. He said, while I was working full time, and he said, I felt like I ran a marathon. But he said, you know what? I also felt like I ran a marathon. <laughs> <laughs> and and I, I finished it. Yeah. And so making it through that, that first year and doing it, I think you'll find is a, uh, it's, it's doable, it's a challenge, it's a commitment, but the result is well worth it. And I think, also, George, I mean, most people are actually in Ronnie's shoes who are who are enrolling in this program, right? I mean, most of them are working professionals, and that's one of the reasons that we have this program online. Right. So. Well, and, and, and Ronnie, your question about experience. Experience will help you in the course. There's not a method by which we can give experiential credit. Otherwise, I would have gotten my doctorate of life a long time ago. <laughs> but the method is... When you go into that teammate, you're gonna find some people who have great field experience already or understanding, some who don't. And when you put together that team, not only are you learning from the instructor and the resources we give you, but you're learning and teaching within the classroom yourself. So Charisma's got another one. Have you had students enrolled who are entrepreneurs running companies? 
I can think of two who were both small contractors who needed to really have better credentials in order to be able to apply for larger projects that they wanted to do. And both of them have continued and grown. I think one of them ended up deciding that the opportunities for him were greater in a bigger company and took a job there. And the other one has grown his business to where he's now doing a whole series of small school remodeling projects for one of the school districts. Okay, do we have any other questions? Well, I appreciate you all joining us today. I think, I think oh, we, have, we have a chat. Oh, that's oh, Francesca wanted to tell us something. Yeah, we mentioned that. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. Well, I think um, we're close to the end. What is the wrap up going to be, uh, Matt, as far as uh, delivering deliverables to the, the people who've watched? Will for this sure. be available for somebody to watch again? Yes, it will be available. Uh, we will get this up on YouTube and we'll also provide every attendee or those of us, you know, those uh, people who RSVP who aren't able to attend, we'll provide them with the slides. Um, I feel free, like I said, to reach out to me directly. Um, I can put you in touch with George if you have questions Absolutely. about the industry or, you know, especially questions about enrollment or financial aid. That's really my area of uh, specialization. So. Um, yes, I very much encourage everybody to contact me and I, I can help you out with enrolling for this summer, as soon as this summer or, you know, at the, at the latest, we have our fall start as well.